Hello and welcome to the Test of Time. This week's episode goes all the way back to 2004, England versus the West Indies at Lord, where one of my best mates had a memorable day out in front of the Queen. Just remember to like and subscribe. If the Harmison gets his reward, been a brilliant spell of bowling. Harmison bowled a superb opening spell. Five wickets for Stephen Harmison. Stephen Harmison, take a bow. Well, Keezy, thanks for joining us on the test of time. Um, England, West Indies. Lords, July 2004. You haven't played for a test match for probably the best part of a year. And then Butch, I think it was Butch. Did Butch have a car crash and he got whiplash? Uh, come play in the game. You come in and by tea time on day one, you're shaking hands, 90 not out with the Queen. Tea time, I was 90 not out. And Strauss, he had got 100. And I tell you, I tell you he was a, as you know, Vaughan, he was a, he's probably the best captain I played under. And before I went out to bat, he said, he sort of looked at me and I'm waiting number three and he just sort of looked at me and he had that sort of look that he does. He does it yeah. on Instagram now all the time, that sort of <laughs> dog, whatever look that he does. And he sort of looked at me and went, about time you got your name on that board, Keezy. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and uh, I never really thought much about it after that. And then I, I went out and played, had a bit of luck. And like you say, at T, I was 90 odd not out. Yeah, and um, have you got, but you went into the game with a bit of form. You, you're flying in the in the championship. I think you're top of the averages, um, and you know Trez gets out early, and you know you walk out full house at at Lords of West Indies. We're flying, you know, throughout. We just beat New Zealand three 0 I think. So you've gone to a dressing room, you know, flying. Um, we take the Mickey out, the Queen being there because when you got a hundred, everything was on about the Queen. You can just see, you know, the Queen sitting at Buckingham Palace, you know, saying to Prince Philip, "Come on, we got out in Lords because Keezy's batting." Um, <laughs> what, a, what a feeling that must have been going out, you know, come back into the team, but obviously going out and full house at Lords. Well, I, I, it sort of start. I mean, I thought I was never going to play again because I'd played the year before, I think, or whenever it was against India when you, you and I made our debuts yeah. the same day. Anyway, went to Australia, uh, did all right, played against Zimbabwe, had two knocks and then got dropped um, and thought that was it really because I got, I got called up. I was having a great year in four-day cricket. I'd had a 1,000 runs by the first day of June, which, not, you know, which is unheard of nowadays. And as I was in that rich vein of form, though, in white ball cricket, I was averaging literally two, I reckon. <laughs> And this is sort of shows you, you know, like the England cricket team, the selection back then was like the dog and duck pub, you know, where they, they picked me in the white ball series against the West Indies when you were flying. Mm. You were like the best bowler in the world. And on your day, there's never been a better bowler almost. And I did nothing in that series. I didn't know. I didn't care about white ball cricket. I mean, I used to play. I used to be desperate to be dropped from Kent in the white ball stuff because it meant a Saturday off. You know, you'd finish. <laughs> on the Friday or the Saturday, so you could go out Saturday night and everyone would play a nonsense Sunday league game. And I was just like, what are they doing that for? You know, I'm having fun with my mates from Beckenham. So I thought I was done really because I that white ball series was a shocker for me. And then I somehow, they, they stuck with me for the test series, which good on them because they could have mm. easily just said, no, no, he's done. So, yeah, it, it was probably the best feeling I'd had. And I remember the Queen walking up to me she just, and I, I sort of yipped a bit. I'm not. I'm not really a royalist. I'm not too. You know. I, I don't really. I don't. You know. I'm not bothered either way really about anything like that. Um, a bit like religion. But um, <laughs> and she sort of came up and shook my hand and said, "You're doing rather well." <laughs> and obviously, someone had told her in. You know. So you know, like that devil wears Prada when someone yeah. says, "This is he's batting. He's on 90. <laughs> and she said that, and I sort of yipped. And just said, yes, but Strauss is doing better. Then Prince Philip sort of came up and said, have you played at Lords before? And I said, no. And I reckon I played there 20 times before. That. <laughs> and I was, it, it sort of did me because I then rushed back. And as you know, I wasn't the most professional. So I then went and had a couple of cigarettes very quickly because that was my routine, you know, being the yeah. ultimate. I think Usain Bolt does the same thing. But And... Um, 
I then went out to bat and got my 100, great moment at Lords, and then got the worst migraine I've had. And my migraines end up where I can't see down one side, like my left, my left eye goes blurred while the mm. vision goes blurred. And that's why I got a double 100, because I then played every shot. I thought, I've got 100, I'm teeing off now. I think I could be sick out in the middle of Lords. And I ended up 160 not out um, against that f- fabulous West Indies attack of Amari Banks and Tino Best and <laughs> Fidel Edwards and, you know, some of those greats of the game. <laughs> so you've got you've got two of your best mates in the dressing room. You've been out there with Strauss, who you've been with the, the, obviously with the academy. There was one or two others that yeah. were on that academy trip. It must have been nice walking back into the dressing room, still batting, even though you've got the migraine. And think, and what's that? What's that like? Because you've you, you've just said the best captain, one of the best captains you played under, told you beforehand about getting your name on the board, and you actually walk back into the dressing room with your name on it. It's very surreal, really. And I was always, you know, it sounds when you when what was I twenty four or something? So you got, you know, I think I'm not married or anything at that stage. You've got no kids. You're not really worried about a mortgage. You're just literally playing for for the fun mm. of it. And, you, and you, you happen to be doing it for England, and that's what it was like. And I always counted myself very lucky because I did it with you and Fred in particular. It, that was a great feeling, I, I remember, and you just think life doesn't really get any better than this um, because, you you know, you, you've got no baggage. Well, you, you, so you get up, go back out, day two, you've got Vaughan for company at the other end. You put, was it 165 on with Vaughan? Was it like batting? You mentioned earlier, you know, what sort of captain and sort of um, man manager he was before the test match started, but you batted with Strauss, who you're close to, you batted with Vorney, two different characters, and bat completely different ways, but both got hundreds and they've got the same outcome. Yeah, but both of those, ironically, both of those, like myself, were very relaxed. Mm. You know, I used to bat with people and they drive you mad because they're so intense. And I was always, you know, I never spoke much about them. In the middle of the overs, it was, or middle, sorry, in between overs, it's a chance to relax. And Vaughn, was like that. We'd sort of not say much. You just literally you might say, oh, just that one couple was starting to swing or whatever. And you wouldn't say much. You'd just sort of stand there, tap your bat or whatever it was, and then you'd go away. And Strauss, he was the same. You know, we, I can't remember one thing that we said to each other, but it was never really anything groundbreaking. You go to 200, um, bat in the air, little clip off the legs. You couldn't have asked for a better <laughs> sort of leg stum half volley from Pedro Collins. Thanks very much. See you later. <laughs> And the, so it was Ambrose. <laughs> and then you, know, you you get out not long after that, walking off. And I mean, it was a standing ovation. I remember, I remember I've watched it again. I was standing on the bat, on the bench on the seat. Uh, it was yeah. a standing ovation from Lords. You know, walking off. What was going through? You know, Rob Key, a free spirited Rob Key at the time. Uh, what was going through your mind then? Just walking off to a like a crescendo of noise. I just think all you ever think is how good is this? I remember yeah. when I got my hundred, when Strauss, he got his hundred, he was sort of shouting and we sort of gave each other a hug and he's like, how good is this? And I'm like, yeah, no, great. And the same thing when I got my hundred, you just, you just sort of can't, you know, I'm pretty, I like phlegmatic, I suppose is the word, if I really know what that means. It's nothing really, I never get too up and I never really get too down. But that actually got me because I remember just thinking, oh, this is unbelievable. You know, it just doesn't get any better. And you, I remember Fred saying it's like a it's like a drug almost doing well in not that we know much about that, like inter, international cricket where everything is maxima. Everything is just maximized. Mm-hmm. You know, everything just feels so much better. You know, it's like it just, however good you think something can feel times it by a thousand. As you know, you know, I knew yeah. it once or twice. You knew it time and time again. And it brings the best out in you. You know, I was playing shots in that innings. So I never thought I could play. I was playing pull shots and I'm like, I've never played that shot before. And international cricket, when you're on form and you feel confident, is like you just start doing things you never thought you could do. But the flip side of that is when you're not confident, it's the complete opposite and you don't know where your next run's coming from. And, you know, we, we end up losing seven wickets for not very many, I think 40 odd. We got. I think we were nearly like five twenty for three, and then we were five seventy all out. I think it was all toll, and West Indies got off to a good start. You know, Lara said before the test match, because it was the first test match. Lara said before the test match, I was having one of my you know purple patches in my career, 
and he said, "With you know, without me, England haven't got a plan B. They've got Harmison, and they've got no plan B." And I remember yeah. coming out on that morning, and I just didn't work. I was bowling lively, pissed. But it just Chris Gale seemed to. Whenever I played against Chris Gale, if I bowl quick, he came harder at me. And I'm not sure if yeah. his beans were going, or he scared the ball, or whatever. He started to sort of counteract. But for some reason, it just didn't happen. They got off to a you know a brilliant start. You know, I think they, they got you know I think Jailo got one wicket, and then all of a sudden Jailo got back into the game, and 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 Ash. Ash was, uh, he got four wickets in that first innings and he was about, he, in his eyes, he was about to retire about 12 months earlier because of injury and people having a go at him. Um, a lot was made about that four-man bowling attack, but actually it was a five. And, and Jarlow proved on that on that sort of end of the second day of what a great spinner he was. I remember, I think I caught Lara or Chandler, but I can't remember which one, one of those Lara, great players. Lara. Lara. You caught Lara. At short leg. And, you know, and, and he did him, though. It wasn't like Lara, because Lara, if you ask Murley, he has Lara as the best player of spin, you know, because Murray, left hand is a little bit, but he said, he says, Brian Lara, absolute genius. And, you know, we see, and, and Gilo then actually did him. You know, it wasn't like Lara had a whoosh at one and he had a sweep and it hit and it was a freak dismissal. Pretty sure he just got him with a rego back pat. And he... You know, Ash, is, Ash was sort of criticised at the time because he was he was always... It must have been a nightmare being an English spinner in that period because you had Murley, you had Shane Warne, and you had Sackley Mushtak, all these people. And then, yeah. you know, Gilo was, your, without DRS as well, was a left-arm spinner, just a bloody good one. But he didn't bowl Doosras and he didn't spin it miles. But in that series, he became a wicket-taker, I remember thinking. Mm. You know, so he wasn't just the hold-and-end-up merchant for you guys. He was someone that could, if it spun, you know, he, he was a threat. And, you know, to get Lara out, I'd say that would be one of his great dis. I mean, you know, in the, that 2005, he got, you know, there's some brilliant dismissals. But to get Lara out, you know, properly done, breaching Lara's defence is unheard of, really, for, for spinners. So, yeah, it was. And I just remember how confident you lot were. I mean, I'd known you for a long time. And I remember we, one of those first games, I was 12th man in the white ball series, and I just said to Fred at one point, oh, my God, how well is Harmy bowling? This this is unbelievable. You know, and, and you were. You, you know, I, even though it was a flat pitch at Lords, you just knew. I'd never played in a team before or since that had so much confidence. And that whole bowling attack with you and Fred, Simon Jones, Hoggy, Gilo. You just knew you were going to win games. And I've never had that before, you know. And that, that, I, you know, if you ask me to go back to any point in my career playing with you lot, that you feel a million dollars, you know, because you're just better than everyone else with your bowlers. Yeah, there was a, a, a passage in that, it, uh, throughout that summer, that we had just we just felt, we, uh, we felt invincible. Um, we weren't quite invincible at the end of that day. Candipal managed to get them over the line from a following on point of view. Yeah. In the part of an invincible bowling attack we felt as though at any point in the in any point of any passage of any game, we would have an answer to whatever was needed. And I remember Fred, who had he had I think he had a couple of injections to make to, to get him to play throughout that series. That's right. Because he, he, he wasn't bowling. Yeah, he wasn't bowling. He wasn't gonna bowl. He, he bowled, he got three he got three or four wickets at the end of at the end of day three. Yeah. And the ball started reversing, and it was just mes- it was it was it was what we were what we were going to get from Andrew Flintoff for the next eighteen months that was going to propel England to win in the Ashes. Him and Simon Jones, that reverse swing, and it was unbelievable. Do you know what? We did that watch along. I did that watch along for two thousand and five. You were on it, weren't you? Yeah. In that great Edgebaston Test on that day, and as I was watching that Test match, and I remember watching that Edgebaston wicket. And that was, and this is the difference between you lot, that was a flat pitch. The pitch was absolutely neutral, apart from Warner, all right? Forget it, but for Seamers, it was a neutral wicket. There was nothing in it for you, really. And this was the difference. You lot, you know, were able to get things. You, you, in that watch-along, I remember just watching and think, actually, you're getting more out of the pitch than Gillespie. You're getting more out of the pitch than any of the Aussie bowlers because you were quicker. 
And you, Fred, and Simon Jones, I remember just thinking, because Hoggy was good, but he was a swing bowler. I think it, it must be so horrible to bowl, to bat against you lot. Mm. Because Simon Jones was almost seen as the slower one of the three, and he was yeah. rapid. You know, and Chanderpaul. Yeah. Do you remember? He, I, I, you would have heard it. I still don't think I've ever heard him speak. Have you? I played with him for two years at Durham, and he, he didn't he didn't say a great deal. But when he plays in your side, I love playing with Shiv because I knew if he got past twenty balls, nobody was getting him out. And we did that in that this Test match was a Test match, which was right. He's got to he's got to twenty. That's it. We're going to have to get everybody else out, and it proved. We did it in the first innings, um, and he got he got a hundred. He got his eleventh eleventh Test match hundred. Um, just got him past the follow-on. We go out and have a bit of fun, get back again. Um, Vaughan, gets another 100. He gets back-to-back 100. I think it was the third person at the time to do that at Lords. What was what was going on with your... What was it going on with the yes and no? You, you decided to give yourself up for, for the captain. Um, was it your fault or was it the captain's fault? No, I, it was Vaughan's fault. I, I, honestly, because he, you know... I thought he was a shocking runner between the wickets, Vaughan. He was <laughs> he was cap- as NASA, wasn't he? Well, yeah, no one. I mean, but, but Vaughan, he was sort of bad because he, you know, he, he made mistakes. NASA just didn't care. What I do remember, he's like a yes, no, sorry, off, and I was run out because I was just going to play shots. We were ahead of the game. Oh, and he said to me, actually, I do remember this. That night, Trez and Strauss, he go out to bat. And this was a different mindset. Yeah. And it got to the last six overs. And normally you have a night watchman. And we're like 100 and whatever ahead. I can't remember exactly. And I'm next in at three. And Fletch says, Keezy, you want a night watchman? I went, yeah, fine, as you do. And he went, Vaughn, he just went, you don't want a night watchman? And I said, no. He went, we don't need a night watchman. You know, And he was absolutely right because we were yeah. ahead of the game. You know, and it was a different... You remember, everyone else back then would have just taken a night watch. Yeah. But Vaughan, was like, no, no, we'll go... Out there. This is an opportunity to score runs. You know, don't yeah. be going out there looking to survive for four overs. We are bossing this game. Go out there and boss the game some more. And he was absolutely right with that. He had such... I loved it because he had such a good positive read on the game. And it makes such a difference, Harmy. If you, as you know... If you think in a positive way, you can do anything. But if you're negative, then there's a chance. You know, all you've got is survive or fail. But if you're positive, you can succeed, survive or fail. And it's massive. And Vaughan, was the best for that. So that positivity you talk about and the, the mindset you talk about, it, it, had, it, it went into the bowler because he was talking to his bowler every single ball. So even if the you bowler know, was going through a, a bad patch... He could still flip you out of it and push you down the right road and get it going. See, I always back my cricket brain. I always thought I had a decent enough read on the game, even as a youngster. And this is where, again, where he was brilliant. I remember at Old Trafford in the, what was that, the third test? Yeah. And the game, Dwayne Bravo's batting, I think, who's just come on the scene then, and he's done all right, Brav. And he's batting, and it's pretty flat at Old Trafford, maybe in the first innings. And Vaughan, I'm a square leg, don't know where somewhere not in the game really and Vaughan he just came over from nowhere bear in mind I'm 23 24 probably and he says um what do you reckon and I went what and he just went well, you know Thorpe's there you got Freddie you got all these guys who are senior players he said what's your view what would you do here and I just went do you know what I think he's looking to play shots here so I'd go 7-2 I'd put an extra fielder on the offside And I'd tell Hoggy just to bowl outside off stump and he'll chase at one and nick it. And he went, yeah, good shout. And he he did exactly that. And I went down from square leg to third man. And Bravo, in an over or two later, schnick one behind, driving at a wide ball and got out. And Vaughan, came straight up, running straight up to me and just went, well, you know, and he sort of Mm. gave me the acknowledgement for that being part of the, you know, my plan. No one else did that. Can you mm. imagine someone, a captain, going up Nasser. to a youngster? Yeah. Yeah, N- NASA is different. But can you imagine a captain going up to a youngster and asking him his opinion and actually doing it? And if it comes off, giving him the credit? You know, and I thought, yeah, things like that, you got, he made you just feel like you were much better than you were. And he's bloody clever like that. There's not many that do it, but he had a way. And he would have done that individually with everyone. Just little 
chats here and there. That, that you know, he spoke to you probably. I wouldn't have a clue about it. Yeah, I know. we talked about Newcastle. We talked about anything other than cricket when I wasn't going yeah. well. When I was going well, he was talking about cricket because he knew I had an idea where it was going. When I didn't have an <laughs> idea where it was going, he was trying to put me back into that, back into that moment. And that for me is what what made Michael the the captain he was. And we got to we got to day five. Whether we're about a bit, Freddie. You know, they had about four sessions. Fred had a bit of a Fred had a do the night before. He got fifty-eight or forty-two balls, and he smashed yeah. it everywhere. And then it, it the, the the fourth innings of the match, Jalo gets five for, Chander Paul gets out just before you know he gets back-to-back hundreds in the game, but will be always remembered for the the, the Minder Winders Tino incident when you know I remember <laughs> I remember again the West Indies got off to a good start. I got Gill with an absolute beauty and in, uh, about 90 mile an hour in swing in Yorker that he had just planted me about an over before he's planted me straight through extra cover and I'm like I'm going to get him here I'm going to bounce it I'm going to go after him but I thought he's waiting for this and I managed to get one through and knocked him over and I thought once we got him Jalo got a beauty through Lara and it was a case of right Chanda Paul at one end and we'll just get everybody else out and Fred had a bit of fun with Tino because you know he's an interesting character is Tino best but Andrew just Andrew was Andrew, and when people ask me about it, and they'll say you know about what Mind the Windows is about, I just said that's Fred being Fred. Mind the windows, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but let's also get it right. He said, "Mind the windows" to every every other ball to a spinner, though, didn't he? Didn't matter who was batting, he'd always shout, "Mind the windows, mind the windows!" And once it comes off, you know, it's like when people sit there and they're watching a game of cricket and they shout, "Wicket ball!" Yeah, and they've said "Wicket ball." A thousand times that day, and when it comes off, they think, "Oh yeah, no, I called it." Yeah, <laughs> see, he said that, and I, but Tino was funny, wasn't he? Because he's quick, Tino best. Yeah, he was quick, and he, and he was quite, he was, you know, like he is. He was quite bullish, wasn't he? He had the odd, well, I can't remember, but he'd swear at you, and he'd, yeah, you know, he still sort of has the odd dig at me on Twitter, and I just, it's the only player in the world. I, I just think Tino, you know, I never say it, but it's like. But Tino, I got two hundred. I didn't get runs against anyone really, apart from you. So I don't know what you know, what sort of what you can say about that. But um, no, he did. And what always, as you know, what makes me laugh most about Fred is how much he laughs at his own jokes. Oh, big time! And that's what that's what made that mind the windows. Tino was the fact that he was giggling at himself, which he does every day. He will always tell a joke or he'll take the mickey out of you. And then he laughs so loud at his own work because he's so pleased with himself that, you know, you can't get a word in. And that's what the giggling was because he generally finds himself so funny. And he got, and Tino, I mean, it, Tino got out because he didn't want to face you. I mean, Jesus, that's, that's pretty much it. But it's, it's nice to be a part of history in some way, I think. And we win the test match. Jalo gets man of the match. You get a double hundred at the home of cricket and Lords and don't get man of the match. Let's get that, let's get that right as well. That Jalo getting man of the match there was like when you give the kid who's improved most, you know, the, the, the medal in football practice. Because Jalo had been having a tough time of it. He got four for, and everyone's like, oh, we've, you know, Jalo's had a tough time of it. We'll make him feel better. I'm like, how about me getting man of the match for a double hundred? I mean, yeah. serious. <laughs> we've, already, we've already got we've already got 100 in each innings it's only ever been happened three times but you know for the once it wasn't a batsman's game this was a bowler's game but the thing I enjoyed most about that that series and that always comes back and you know I know NASA describes me you and Fred you know how close we are and we talk about it but when I look at I look at that series in general that for me is the best series I'd I'd gone through because of what had happened in the series you know we were questioned about playing together and you got what do you get I'm just looking at this you got 220 in the first innings of the first test Fred got 167 second test match and got wickets yeah. you got 93 and for me which was the best best victory I've ever been involved in that third test match when you and Fred got runs at the end when yeah. Thorpe you got 100 in the first innings was in hospital having had his injection uh, Fred, Fred got 70 in the fourth test match I managed to get six for and I feel as though that 
that sort of six weeks was a, one of the best six weeks of my life because not only was it successful, I was actually playing with my best mate. Oh yeah, that 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 that's the the, the you know the you could freeze that moment in time. You know when I finally go, that's the time I want to go back to really as a player because it was you know we were you know we had none of the we had none of the worries or anything did we you know nothing none of the you know life was just so much fun as it is still now don't get me wrong but it just never got any better than that summer for me personally because of that reason you know and we caught everything you know you were you were just you know you were the best bowler in the world by my I mean it was just so much fun we we're all confident we didn't really care that you know we cared because we wanted to win obviously and all of that but we just we just went out and had fun that was like you know young men just having the time of their lives and i'll never you know it never got any better than that for me really in as far as cricket but just for those reasons and you know winning games of cricket but doing it with your mates i mean most of us are lucky to you know do what we want to do and play for england or get a job that you really you, you really want you know, which is great, but we were, we did it as mates, really, um, which is just, you know, very, unhe you know, almost unheard of. You know, it's the thing that we said. I remember when Fred and I at Old Trafford knocked down those runs, when we were on that academy in Adelaide and you were eating ice creams when we were all walking, well, we were all running to the pier and stuff. <laughs> and we used to go out and have a few nights out, didn't we? And we'd get to like two o'clock and drunk and we'd sort of say, oh, how good would it be if we all played for England together and chased you know won a game for england and stuff and we actually did it you know and you mm. did it for, you and Fred did it for you know years afterwards it, you know it's an incredibly privileged position to have been in keezy thanks very much it's been a great you know journey back to a fantastic test match and a test match series one that i will not forget from a series point of view and i'm sure that moment of walking off at lords 221 it's probably the best feeling you've ever had. Thanks very much for your time.